Um, so where we left off on the last video uh, was pretty simple and straightforward. Just showed you kind of where um, the different workbooks and the data sources are located and then instructed you how to start your own workbook. So we'd be sort of in a, a template like this and some of you may know Tableau so this, you know, you can skip through this, you may not necessarily um, need to care but it, you know there appears that there's a ton going on and you know in a, in a way it's sort of like Excel in, in that there is right there's a ton you can do here um, but there are a couple of basic principles that at least help you get started so you know when I was learning um, you know if we move from left to right we can talk about the the, the most important things and then we'll, we'll go through a couple of basic examples so over here on um, you know the left uh, you know, if we just keep it in the data and we don't even worry about the analytics or any of that stuff yet, um, you see all of the fields that would have been in the table are present and they are simply broken up into uh, two big categories, a dimension and a measure. Um, you know, a dimension would be best thought of, you know, for those of you that, that have some familiarity with data structures, they're, they're either going to be nominal or categorical variables. So this would be like the name of something, or its classification, or let's say maybe you have like a number that's standing in for something like one, two, three, four, and it's nominal. That's what would be here. So they're called dimensions because they're they're literally meant to kind of partition out uh, our graphs and our visualizations, and we'll show in a second. So this is what you know. You may want to see a comparison between the Carnegie classification and whether something has an open admissions policy. Right, these are the categorical variables that you drag in. The others are the measures, so the integers uh, or the or the floats, uh, you know, the currencies or or the percentages, um, you know, the things that we can do basic arithmetic to. And you know, the iPads data set has a ton of these in here, um, you know, so it gives us a, a nice amount to work with uh, as well. Um, you know, we're not gonna. Uh, do it just yet, but there's there's ways you can also you know go and you can move between the two. Like a common one we'll play with in a little bit is like right now I just have institution's name. I could actually come here and make this uh, a measure, right? I could convert it to a measure, and then it would move from just being like the name of an institution. You know, right? If I drag the name of an institution here, um, you know, you'll see all of their names and it's waiting for more information. But it could move from a name of an institution to maybe counting the number of institutions, because that in its own way is a cool measurement, right? How many discrete institutions do I have? So I don't want to get into the, the particulars of that yet, but again, just remember that they are also interchangeable. You can take a measure and make it more kind of categorical, right? Maybe if you had a, a score here between 1 and 10, and rather than treating that like a continuous variable, you wanted it to be categories. 1 was good, 2 was better, three was best, or something. And then same thing here, you can take something that's a dimension and try to get the unique number and move it into a measure. So moving on over, um, you know, it's structured, you know, somewhat similar with, with some definite exceptions, but somewhat similar to how we would do a pivot table. Ultimately, you're gonna have some rows and some columns where you're depicting information. You have the ability to filter, right? You can drag uh, items in here and turn certain values on or off. Um, and, but the two big areas that are really different are, are kind of here and here. And, um, you know, they're talk about them in the abstract now, but it'll hopefully become clear when I start showing examples. Uh, the sheet is really where your visualizations are going to appear. These are what's going to show up in real time every time you modify your inputs. And then marks, you're going to see there's times when you're creating a scatter plot or a pie chart or a map or anything that you're going to have multiple variables on it. And this is what allows you to sort of like go in and make them a little bit more dynamic. So they're not necessarily just showing two things. Maybe you're showing something in rows and columns, but you have a third variable that's coloring something up, or a fourth variable that's sizing it, or a fifth variable that's labeling, or you just want it to be a detail that would happen when somebody clicks on it. That's what a mark is. And then kind of the final big thing you should really know about is, is here, the show me. Um, you know, this is the primary visualizations that you can create standard and they each sort of tell you what you need and beyond that you know there's only so much that I know about Tableau already and I'll keep posting more content as I get better at it but there's a whole user community out there right so if you really are interested in taking tree maps to the next level just google Tableau online tree maps 
and you'll get some nice instructions and some nice tips from people. But at the basically is what these are telling you here is that in order to be created, I need a dimension or at least one or two measures. To make me, you need a dimension and a measure. To make me, you need a measure that's in a bin field, right? Anyone who's ever done a histogram, right? You depict it based on like all your values based on little category bins, you know, from X to Y, Y to Z, and so on and so forth. So let's just stop talking about it and actually, you know, kind of play around here. So, you know, maybe let's start simple and we look through our dimensions and we see we have a field here that says if something's in HCBU and let's drag that up to the row just to see what happens. So we drag it up and there it's depicting itself here. We have two values there, um, you know, yes or no. I can sort them if I want to right here. It's not going to do too much except sort them up and down, but that's how we would start. And so maybe we want to show the total number of employees for each. So we'd, we'd scroll down until we found our total employees field. Maybe down here, total employees, all staff. So I can drag that and put it up here in the columns field. I see I got messed up. There we go. Give it its second to load. And there you go. Now Tableau has chosen what it thinks is the best graph for you. It says uh, this works, so I'm going to give you a... Um, um, like a recommended bar chart, and there it is. It shows you the total staff and the total employees. But you have control, right? You can come up and, and choose to click one of these if you'd rather just view it as a text-based table. And then again, given the, uh, the slowness or quickness of the internet that day, uh, it'll load it for you. So the other uh, cool thing to notice, um, you know, notice when I did this, when I took it away from the graph, uh, and I went to more of like a tabular thing, it moved it down here into marks. Um, you know, so that actually means I can treat it like text as it is now, or I could change it. I could say, no, you're a color. And if I made you a color, you switch and no longer are you showing your text. In fact, you're using a color to talk about what you are, or I could use a size to show what you are. And again, it would change and, and, and modify a size, right? Tiny versus, uh, versus big. So, uh, you know, I don't want to focus on that too much now because we'll, we'll get into better ways to use marks later, but I just wanted to kind of give you a, a heads up of what it was. The real important thing though to notice is that Tableau is, um, it's, it's dynamic and smart, so it's trying to assist with what it thinks you want. And this is what we wanted, right? We wanted the total number of employees, but just remember, think how that data is actually organized in the table. It would have been, you know, 3,000 rows, and one of those rows or one of those columns would have had a yes or a no for an HCBU, and the other one would have had the actual individual number of employees um, per university. But this actually made it a sum. We didn't do anything. We just dragged it in and we made it a sum. And the reason that is is because we're set up over here. If my analysis is going to work, which it doesn't look like it wants to. There we go. So if I click on analysis, you can see I've got aggregate measures picked up. It's usually good to leave this on. Um, in a later video, we'll talk about why you turn it off. But what this essentially means is that when you drag in a measure, it's going to do an aggregation on them so that you can get what you would in a pivot table, like a sum or, or whatnot. And you control that, right? You can click on it. And, you know, I'm, whenever I'm teaching students GIS or anyone anything, I think the, the best thing to get you good with, with Tableau or, or anything is just click like a, like a mad person. You know, anytime you see the option to click on something, do it and see all of the new stuff you can do. Oh, I can format this. So maybe you look like a currency, even though I know that this is number of students, right? We could format it any way we want so it comes up to us. Oh, there's that interesting point I mentioned earlier that we're not going to dive too deep into, but you could turn this into like a dimension. It could be like, a, you know, discrete numbers. Um, or you can come down here where it says measure and see there's different types of calculations, the same way you do a pivot table. So now I could be showing the average number uh, that are in an HCBU. Now I could be showing, um, you know, the maximum or the minimum or the percentile or any of the calculations uh, that you might want to get into. So we just leave average for now. And, you know, then you can keep building on this, right? So we've got one row here, but maybe now we want to drag another one in. So we'll drag control type, which I think is if something's public or private. We can put it up in the columns. We create ourselves a little grid here where now we have, like, an HCBU on, on the, um, you know, the north-south and then a control type on the, I think it's west. And, you know, then you can see, okay, there's 670 that are private in HCBU and, and, and 1,422. 
that are public and sorry, not HCBU. And then HCBUs, there's 759 that are, are public and then 360 that are private. And this also gives you a good opportunity, right? Every time you start loading more data, you get more variables you can play with. So you can actually start messing around with like what they're asking you to do. And this one, you know, we kind of sort of created something like this earlier where it changes it to a size table, right? Things are oriented by how big they are. And then we can, we can sort of mess with this as we need to, right? Maybe come up here to size and make the, you know, the, the things even bigger or smaller, although that sort of like cancels it out unless we can make the table a little bit larger. Um, or we can come over here to like a color heat map, you know, a highlight table. And that'll keep your variables in here, but notice it automatically brings in a coloration here because it's not just showing us the total number, it's also putting like a color scheme that we could go to colors and edit, right? And he just picked this one for us, but we could find another palette if we wanted, you know, an orange one if we wanted to do that. Make it go up in steps, make it reversed. But either way, it's trying to show you the same thing, right? The total number of employees uh, working in one of these areas as highlighted, um, you know, by a given color. So I'm going to stop this one here, uh, and then we're going to pick up with the next one, uh, almost seriously kind of just moving our way down here into different charts and different visualizations, and then, and then using the opportunity as we get to each new visualization to try to introduce something new for how you might calculate a field or perform an analysis uh, or the like. So I'll see you in the next video.